Okay, so Stranger Things Season 4 finally introduced the actual villain of the show, Vecna, who's been pulling the strings from behind the scenes all along. If we take a look back at Season 1, we can see that he's the one who's been targeting Will all along and not the Mind Flare. There's even the clock chimes when Will gets knocked off the bike right before he gets taken. The fact that Will is literally able to stay alive in the Upside Down so long and uses the song Should I Stay or Should I Go that Jonathan showed him to break through and make contact with the real world, Will literally gets possessed by the Mind Flare in Season 2 who is being controlled by Vecna, and that's the first time that we technically hear Vecna speak. Why am I tied up? Why am I tied up? Why am I tied up? And then again in Season 3 with Billy, this is the first time that Vecna has talked to Eleven since the lab incident in 1979. But what else did we miss? Hi, I'm Michael J. I went back through the entire show and found every moment Vecna was the one pulling the strings, so we're going to go over everything and bring it full circle, so make sure you watch until the end. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. Surprisingly enough, only 12% of the people watching the video right now are actually subscribed. So shout out to the 12%, but if you're part of the 90% that's not subbed, what are you even doing? Go down and punch that subscribe button until it falls off. It doesn't cost a thing, it's totally free, and it really helps me out. We're trying to hit 500k by the end of the year, and you can help us get us there. For all the people that are subscribed, I'm leaving a plate of fresh cookies for you in the comments. Go get them while they're hot because we have a lot of stuff to go over. Starting off, at the beginning, Season 1, Episode 1, we get the first hint of Vecna. As we know, the Grandfather Clock is a huge part of who Vecna is. Not only does he use it to target his victims in Season 4, but we've also been speculating that the clock is what allows him to see into the future like when he showed Nancy. They teased it in the trailer so much and it was literally everywhere in Season 4. As Will is biking home from Mike's house, he comes across a shadowy figure in the road that scares him and makes him swerve off the road and fall off his bike into the trees. And as soon as he's off his bike, we can clearly hear clock chimes which we know is tied to Vecna. This along with the fact that whoever this was in the road chased him down to the shed and ended up using psychic powers to unlock the door led half of the fan base to believe that this was Vecna himself in the road going after Will that night. Because if you look closely, it also seems like his left hand is much bigger than his right hand, and Vecna too has a larger left hand than his right hand. And can Considering this came out six years ago, obviously they didn't know exactly what Vecna was going to look like, and we can all kind of see the silhouette is similar, so we can believe that this was their best interpretation of what they thought Vecna would eventually look like. And they got us to believe it was just a Demogorgon because we didn't know who Vecna was. But last time I checked, Demogorgons don't have psychic abilities. But if we take it back a step, as much as I want to believe that this was Vecna in the first episode, I think there's more to it than that. Now real quick, I want to talk to you about the sponsor of today's video. Dragon City. Dragon City is a free to play game that lets you collect and breed over a thousand different dragons so you can literally build your own empire. You can collect and train your dragons so they're ready for battle. You can even take two of your favorite dragons and breed them to create your own unique dragon. Now recently they just announced a giant collaboration bringing your favorite characters from The Walking Dead into Dragon City. That's right, Rick, Negan, Michonne, Maggie, Carol, and my favorite, Daryl, are now dragons that you can collect and add to your arsenal. Each dragon possesses their own exclusive primary element, making them totally unique, and their special bunker attack gives them an extra power in PvP fights. Get the Negan, Maggie, Rick, and Carol dragons through the offers or the breeding island as they arrive in game, and master the Michonne quest to get the ferocious Michonne dragon. And if you collect all five, you'll receive the Daryl dragon for free. To collect all the exclusive Walking Dead dragons, go download Dragon City by clicking the link in the description or scan the QR code here, and you'll get a free starter pack with 15,000 food, 30,000 gold, and the epic zombie nature dragon. Thank you so much to Dragon City for sponsoring this video, and thanks to you guys for checking out Dragon City. Alright, now back to the video. Now, I wouldn't put it past the Duffer Brothers to have it all planned out from the very beginning. I don't think they entirely fleshed out Vecna until the end of Season 3 and all of Season 4, but I wouldn't be surprised if they did the same thing that they're doing with Season 5. They said they know how it will start and end. They just need to fill in the middle. And I think they went about Vecna from season 1 the same way. I think they clearly knew that he would be pulling the strings behind everything all along throughout the whole show, and they just fleshed him out as they went through each season. I mean, looking back, you can literally see a trail of Vecna, and the trail starts in season 1 and leads all the way right up into season 4 into his big reveal. The Mind Flare, Billy, the Meat Puppet, Will, everything. But this, I don't know if this is Vecna directly. 
In 2018, Dark Horse released a graphic novel called The Other Side, and it covers Will's time in the Upside Down in Season 1, and it actually shows Will being tracked and hunted by specifically a Demogorgon. But that doesn't explain how the Demogorgon was able to telekinetically open the lock on the door. Unless, just what if Vecna himself was behind the wheel and using this Demogorgon as his puppet to kidnap Will? Just like how he controlled Will in Season 2 and like he completely controlled Billy in Season 3. We don't really know the laws around how his psychic abilities work or how close he has to be to use them or what dimension he has to be in. I mean, you would think he would have to be in the near vicinity, let alone in the same dimension to use his powers to unlock the door, or he could just lift Eleven up and drag her to the portal from where he is. But maybe he's able to use his powers through his home. I mean, he never did with Will though, it could just be an error with how things panned out or they originally meant to give Demogorgon's telekinesis powers to. I mean, in the finale, we see the Demogorgon reach out his hand as if he's trying to use his powers, but the lock on the door was the only instance we saw of this. That's why everyone's speculating that this was Vecna physically in Hawkins in Season 1, and as much as I want to believe that, I'm not sure this was him. L banished him to the Upside Down. He can't open portals, and that's why he needs L. But the Demogorgons can. Maybe they can move things with their minds too. I think at the very least, Vecna was personally controlling this Demogorgon we see right here. I think that would explain the door unlock. Vecna said he doesn't get the power to open gates until the end of Season 3. In Season 1, Vecna either wants to use Will as a host to ultimately get Eleven's power, or harvest hosts for his upside down army for the invasion and destruction of the entire world. Maybe the Demogorgons can make portals in close proximity to the first one Elle made when she first made psychic contact with the Demogorgon in Season 1, so Vecna has been using them to open portals all throughout Season 1. It looks like the Demogorgons were neutral when he first got to the upside down, and the Russian commander in Season 4 said that the Mind Flare particles went inside the Demogorgons before they went crazy, so maybe Vecna uses the Mind Flare to control the Demogorgons to open the portals. Either way, I think we can assume Vecna was controlling the Demogorgon throughout all of Season 1, including the one at the end. As L is banishing it to the Upside Down, it reaches out its hand towards Eleven like it's personal, like it's not just a squeaming animal. Both times L is in the Deprivation Tank, we can also hear the clock ticking, especially when she made contact with the Demogorgon in the first place and opened the portal. At first, in Season 1, Vecna sent a Demogorgon to do his work, and since that didn't work, he had to figure out another way to get things done. He figures out a way to keep the portal from Season 1 open and uses Demo Dogs now to create a tunnel system under Hawkins, preparing for the invasion of the world starting with the town of Hawkins. He decides to use Will as a host this time, and this is the first time we hear Vecna talking in the show. Besides establishing that Vecna likes it cold and dark, we also learn that Will is now part of the hive mind and can feel and see everything that the rest of the hive mind feels. And the weird thing is, Will said the more it spreads, the more he is connected and that's all he can see. Which worries me, because with season 5, there is literally a giant super portal across the entire town of Hawkins. Will's connection is going to come back faster than ever, I'm afraid, and there's another moment where Will and Dr. Owens are talking and we learn that Will is fully aware that Vecna is not trying to kill him. In fact, he doesn't want to kill Will, but he does want to kill everyone else. Literally exactly what Henry Creel monologued to Eleven in season 4, but why? Why does he need to use Will for that he doesn't want to kill him? Also, when Hopper goes off looking for clues in the vines and finds himself in the Upside Down, we can clearly hear clock chimes. This is just saying that now he is in Vecna's world. Another interesting moment is when they're trying to use Will to spy on the Upside Down, Vecna completely takes over and tries his very best to act human like Will and tell everyone the graveyard is where he doesn't want him to see. But really, he tricked them into sending the soldiers there so he could send his army of demo dogs to ambush and kill all of them as revenge for burning him the night before when they rescued Hopper. And soon after, they realize that whatever is using Will as a host is connected to the tunnels, to the Upside Down, to the monster monsters to everything. They realize that the monster is inside everything. If the vines feel pain, then so does Will. 
hive mind. And then Dustin explains that the mind flare is a monster so ancient it doesn't know its true home. It takes over races of people by enslaving their brains using psionic powers. All it wants is to conquer the world because it thinks that it's the master race. It views other races as inferior and wants to spread and take over dimensions. This is literally Vecna. This is Henry Creel they're describing, who at this point is controlling the mind flare and that's exactly what he does and what he is trying to do. They were describing Vecna the whole time and they didn't even know it until two years later. I also found it interesting when Will starts freaking out in the shed and yelling while he's tied up and yelling why is he tied up. It's almost like Vecna and the mind flare wasn't as good at using him as a host and their commands and control came out more as emotions and rage than it did as words. I mean they eventually got better at this with Billy and were much more in control. Also Jonathan and Joyce use happy memories to bring Will back as well as Mike bringing up the first time meeting him. They used both songs and happy memories to save him just like Max in season 4. And then as Will is yelling at the party to let him go, it's really Vecna yelling, Will is inside his body but is only able to communicate by tapping his fingers in Morse code. I'm afraid it's the opposite with Max right now. She's stuck somewhere in Vecna's mind but doesn't have any way to communicate with her physical body she's detached from. As soon as Vecna hears the phone ring, he kind of drops projection with Will's body and immediately searches his memories to figure out where that phone is from, locating his house and sending the demo dogs there. I mean, you can kind of see it. He just steps away and Will's body falls and Vecna focuses all of his energy on searching to find where the house is and send his army after them. Later, Vecna almost kills Joy with her own son grabbing her throat and choking her out until Nancy literally has to shove a hot pike into his side and he releases Joyce and eventually leaves Will. Now since using Will as a host and sending the demo dogs into Hawkins didn't work, season 3 he had to try something new. Instead of using a demogorgon or one singular human host like he tried in seasons 1 and 2, this time Vecna recruits the whole town into the meat puppet in hopes of getting to Elle to consume her and her powers to open portals so Vecna can launch his attack on the world. This time, just like when Will was taken, with Billy too we heard clock chimes when he gets taken. Honestly, this is so interesting to me. It's so weird to see all the puzzle pieces finally fall into place. And then the first time we hear Vecna speaking through Billy is in the sauna episode. When the kids lure Billy to the sauna, Vecna has definitely gotten better at acting human through Billy, or at least letting him stay in control enough to not raise suspicion. But still, as soon as he sees the mannequin, he walks over to it as if it's a real person and immediately does the throat hold and lift into the air like we see him do all through season four. This is Vecna. And then, right there, Eleven surprises him face to face for the first time since the lab in 1979. You can really see the surprise on his face, and I think Will is terrified here because he knows it's the same thing that took him over last year. He doesn't know it's Vecna specifically, but he knows it's the same thing that was in him, and that's why he's terrified. Vecna realizes that Billy's strength isn't enough to break free from the sauna he's trapped in and tries a different approach. He starts trying to pretend it's Billy and use humanity to get them to believe him, just like he did with Will in season 2. But I gotta say he did it way better here. He's learned. Vecna makes Billy grab a tile shard and Will immediately feels what he's about to do. Will tells Mike Billy's been activated, meaning he knows Vecna is in control and he's playing Max, just like he does in season 4. Billy breaks the window and jumps at Max and starts yelling at her to let him out or he's gonna gut her. I mean, this is Henry Creel really coming out here through Billy. I think it's so cool re-watching everything now that we know it was Vecna all along. Later in the hospital, Will realizes Vecna is here when he takes control of the meat puppet for the finale, and later when Elle makes contact with Billy just like she did with the Demogorgon the first time she touches him, she establishes a connection between them. Vecna literally uses Billy to grab on and hold Eleven until a connection is established and she gets sucked inside his memories. And honestly, all these memories look a a lot like how Vecna searches through memories like we saw in season 4 when he looks through people's trauma. And just the same, Elle goes through Billy's trauma all the way up until he gets taken at the old steelworks. Elle tries to leave Billy's head and she ends up in an alternate version of the cabin, most likely somewhere that Vecna creates or somewhere inside of Vecna's head in Billy's head. And Billy, controlled by Vecna, walks in. He says Mike can't hear her and Elle shouldn't have looked for him because now he sees her. Now they can all see her. All the hive mind. He says, you let us in, and now you're going to have to let us stay. Don't you see all this time we've been building it? All that work, all that pain, all of it for you? And now it's time. 
time to end it. We're going to end you. And when you're gone, we're going to end your friends. And then we're going to end everyone. I mean, Vecna again here is literally spilling out the same game plan that he monologues to Eleven in season four. This is truly Vecna. I feel like I can almost hear Jamie Bauer's voice as Vecna saying these lines through Billy. They're so aggressive and to the point and filled with hate. Vecna's been working all these years preparing for season five for his invasion of Hawkins. I think it truly is going to be the biggest endgame ever. This is do or die for all of the kids. And then the final moment we hear Vecna speak through Billy is in the end when he lays Eleven down as a sacrifice before the meat puppet comes in. And you gotta remember, this is after Vecna has already been somewhat successful in taking a bite out of Eleven and stealing her powers to open portals, which we see him use in season four. This was simply just to kill her now that he got what he wanted. Billy leans down and says, don't be afraid, it'll be over soon, just try to stay very still. Honestly, even this is very reminiscent of his final monologue speech to Elle at the end of season four. So many different instances of him pulling the strings and almost every single one lines up exactly with what we got in season four. Personally, I think this is so impressive that they had enough foresight to connect all four seasons and be as cohesive as this is, minus the Demogorgon using powers on the lock. Unless you really think that was Vecna himself going after Will in season one. What do you guys think? Also, thanks to Dragon City for sponsoring this video. Go down and click the link in my description to claim the special rewards and you can start playing today. I'll see you guys soon in another video, but until then, I will see you in the comments. Peace.